The Spider-Man Lost in Council Media Iceberg is playing. Spider-Man 4 was a planned superhero movie that was intended to be the fourth installment in the Spider-Man film franchise directed by Sam Raimi. The movie was developed in the late 2000s and was scheduled to be released in 2011. However, the project was eventually cancelled due to creative differences between director and the studio. The exact plot for Spider-Man 4 is not entirely known, but some details about the story have been revealed over the years. The film was set to continue the story of Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker, who would have faced a new villain named the Vulture, who would have been played by John Malkovich. Anne Hathaway was also cast in the movie as Felicia Hardy, who was expected to eventually become the Black Cat. Other characters from the previous films were expected to return, including Mary J. Watson, played by Kirsten Dunst, J. Jonah Jameson. There was also rumors that Dr. Connors, played by Dylan Baker, would finally transform into the lizard however the film never made it into production and the project was ultimately scrapped instead sony pictures decided to reboot the franchise with a new director and cast which resulted in the release of the amazing spider-man The Amazing Spider-Man series was a reboot of the Spider-Man film franchise that starred Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker. The series consists of two films, The Amazing Spider-Man, which came out in 2012, and The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which came out in 2014. The second film ended with several unresolved storylines. However, due to the mixed critical reception and the lower than expected box office performance and the controversial Sony hack in 2014, Sony decided to hit the reset button and reboot the series once again with Spider-Man Homecoming and Sp Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Okay, then. Uh... Spider-Man Unlimited is a fun, endless runner game available on iOS, Android, and Windows. The user can play as Spider-Man, running, swinging, and fighting through levels while facing famous villains. They can also unlock and play as different versions of Spider-Man with unique abilities. Spider-Man Unlimited was action-packed and had cool graphics. Reviewers praised the game's controls, sound, and animations, and a variety of characters. Unfortunately, around March in 2019, the game was discontinued. Spider-Man Unlimited has been downloaded 30 million times before getting shut down. The Spider-Man Safety Series is an educational video collection created by Coronet Films. It was released in the 1990s and consists of four separate animation tapes. Don't Hide Abuse, Smart Kids Play It Safe, What Do You Do About Drugs, and Where Do You Go For Help. These videos were specifically designed for elementary classrooms. Unfortunately, the VHS release of the Spider-Man Safety Series is no longer available and has gone out of print. Since the videos were primarily sold to schools, obtaining a copy can be hard to come by. Out of the four episodes, Don't Hide Abuse has been uploaded online, and at the time of this recording, no footage of the other three episodes exists. If you need help, don't be afraid to ask for it. If someone is abusing you in any way, talk to an adult you trust. Your parents, a teacher, a clergyman, neighbor, the parent of a friend, or a child abuse hotline. Once you get that secret off your chest, you'll feel a lot better. I promise. As previously mentioned, Spider-Man 4 is the canceled fourth entry of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films. A Spider-Man 4 video game was supposed to be released at the same time as the movie released. Tobey Maguire will most likely return for the role as Spider-Man and Peter Parker in the video game, considering the fact that he was in the previous games. However, both the movie and the video game were ultimately canceled due to creative differences between the director and the studio. According to Wayne Dalton, elements of the game were recycled into the game Prototype 2. This implies the studio that would have created Spider-Man would have been Radical Entertainment, the creators of the prototype series. Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro is a PlayStation video game released in 2001. The series serves as a sequel to the previous Spider-Man game. This game falls under the genre of a third-person action-based adventure game where players must assume the role of Spider-Man with the main objective is to defeat the villain, Electro. Following the tragic events of the September 11 attacks, the game was pulled from the store shelves and underwent modifications and was re-released on October 19 of the same year. As a result, the original version of the game became exceedingly rare and was nearly unattainable 
for a significant period of time. The re-release incorporated various changes, with the most notable alteration occurring during the final battle with the Electro. In the original version, the climax of confrontation took place on top of the World Trade Center. However, in the re-release version, the specific name of the building was omitted, and modifications were made to the level's design, including an addition of a bridge connected to two structures. These adjustments were made to avoid resemblance to the Twin Towers. Gameplay footage from the pre-9/11 version circulated online. On May 28, 2015, a YouTuber named El Vicio Gamer shared a video showcasing the final battle from the original version. Josh Keaton is an American voice actor and singer. Keaton is known for voicing characters like Shiro in Voltron, Legendary Defender, and most famously, Peter Parker in The Spectacular Spider-Man. In Spider-Man 2002, Keaton was originally cast as the title character before Tobey Maguire agreed to reprise his role for the game. Keaton's original audio as Spider-Man has remained lost to the public, but some of his Spider-Man lines were reused when Keaton was cast as Harry Osborn in the unlockable version of the game where he can play as the Green Goblin. Spider-Man the Green Goblin sometimes use the same lines and phrases throughout the levels of the game. Come on, freak. You need to learn a lesson, and Shocker's School of Hard Knocks is now open. Oh, give me a break, Shock. I can't believe you have any class, let alone a whole school worth. Spider-Man 3 is the third installment of the original Spider-Man films directed by Sam Raimi. The movie ended with Peter Parker meeting Mary Jane at a jazz club where they embrace each other, share the dance, and then the film shows the end credits. An alternate ending is shown a Spider-Man swinging from a building. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a 2014 live action superhero film directed by Mark Webb. His film was the final entry in the Andrews Garfield Spider-Man series due to the film's underperformance. Amazing Spider-Man 2 was intended to introduce the character Mary Jane Watson, a longtime love interest and eventual wife of Peter Parker. She was going to be played by Shailene Woodley. However, by the time the film released, it was already announced that her entire role was cut from the final film. James Cameron's Spider-Man was a film project that gained momentum in the 1990s. Despite the initial excitement, this particular iteration of Spider-Man never reached the production stage and the project ultimately fell through during the early 90s. James Cameron embarked on developing his unique vision for a Spider-Man film. He dedicated his efforts in crafting a script that drew inspiration from the beloved comic book storylines, exploring dark themes, and added his distinctive touch. Cameron's script introduced a different twist to the original story, where he envisioned Peter Parker acquiring his spider-like abilities through generic engineering instead of a radioactive spider bite. It was indicated that a love triangle between Peter Parker, Mary J. Watson, and Gwen Stacy would have been a significant component in James Cameron's script. However, despite Cameron's enthusiasm and creative input, the project encountered numerous obstacles along the way. These hurdles composed of production challenges, legal disputes, and financial issues, all of which contribute to setback and delays until eventually it was cancelled. The Sinister Six is a group of supervillains in the Spider-Man comics who often team up to take down Spider-Man. The idea of a Sinister Six film was first introduced in the post credit scene of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. The Sinister Six movie was going to be released in 2016, but was later cancelled following the mixed reviews of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 3 producer Avi Arad revealed that a Venom spinoff was in the works. Jacob Aaron was commissioned to write a script, but it was rejected the following year. In September 2008, Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese signed on to write the film. Reese later revealed that they had been writing two drafts for the film, and the studios were pushing the film forward in 2009. Gary Ross, who was rewriting the latest draft of the unproduced Spider-Man 4 film, was assigned to rewrite the Venom script and direct the movie. This Venom spinoff was cancelled after Spider-Man 4 was scrapped. It wouldn't be until 2018, where Venom would get a proper spinoff starring Tom Hardy. The Spectacular Spider-Man is an animated television series that aired from 2008 to 2009. The series received critical acclaim for storytelling, character development, and animation. However, despite its popularity, The Spectacular Spider-Man did not continue beyond its second season. But the reason why it never got a third season is due to the ownership and licensing issues between Sony and Disney. 
In the 90s, after Marvel went bankrupt, they sold the rights to other characters from various movie studios. In 1997, American film writer and producer David S. Goyer made a script for a film the production company New Line Cinema was making. The script can be found online. Dolph Lundgren was cast as Eddie Brock and Robert England would have been Cletus Cassidy. The film was canceled because New Line Cinema didn't like Goyer's script and they sold the Venom film rights to Sony Pictures. Uncle Ben was a bit part of Peter Parker's story in both Sam Raimi and Mark Webb's iteration of the Spider-Man films. In Spider-Man Homecoming, there was a deleted scene that involves Uncle Ben. Although he doesn't physically appear in the film, the scene was referred to as the Uncle Ben scene. The scene was aimed to explore Peter's motivation and the impact of losing Uncle Ben, but it was ultimately cut from the final film. This was likely for storytelling and pacing reasons. As a result, the specific scenes are not widely known. The Spider-Man animated series that aired in 1981 had a Latin American Spanish dub commonly referred to as Spider-Man 81 Latin dub. Some of the Latin dub can be found here on YouTube. Las nuevas aventuras de el hombre araña. The Ultimate Spider-Man video game was developed by Treyarch and published by Activision in 2005. In the game, players get to experience the thrill of being both Spider-Man and Venom in the open world version of New York City. The game draws inspiration for the popular Ultimate Spider-Man comic book with its cell shaded art style is beautifully capturing the look and feel of a comic book. The game also offers a compelling and original narrative inspired by comic books. Upon its release, Ultimate Spider-Man received positive reviews and developed a decent fan base. Despite its positive reception, a sequel game for the series was canceled due to lower sales compared to Spider-Man 2. Activision was not confident that a sequel would generate significant sales. The planned sequel would have focused on the Green Goblin as the main villain, and concept art for the game can still be found online. Spider-Man Unlimited was an animated television series that aired from 1999 to 2001. The series follows the adventures of Spider-Man in a parallel dimension called Counter-Earth. While the series had a dedicated fan base, it was ultimately canceled due to it being vastly overshadowed by the anime Pokemon, which aired around the same time and garnered higher ratings. The Venom movie is about Eddie Brock, a journalist who became the host of an alien symbiote. Together they must stop the villainous Carlton Drake and his plans to exploit the symbiotes. According to Tom Hardy, around 30 minutes of footage was cut from Venom. No official statement was given why the film was cut, but more than likely this was done in order to keep the PG-13 rating. When Canon Films landed the rights to Spider-Man in 1985, they started developing it as a horror movie that was inspired by David Cronenberg's film, The Fly. The studio even brought on Toby Hooper to work on the film alongside Outer Limits creator Leslie Stevens to write a script for the film. In this version of Peter Parker's origin story, instead of being bitten by a radioactive spider, Parker was purposely bombarded with radiation by a corporate scientist named Dr. Zork, who transformed him into a giant eight-armed spider hybrid who was so monstrous, he quickly becomes suicidal. Canon Films had licensed Spider-Man from Marvel for over $200,000, but while they knew the comics were highly popular, they misunderstood the core concept and thought Spider-Man was a monster character like the Wolfman and the Fly. Bill Bixby, the actor who portrays David Banner in the 1970s series The Incredible Hulk, had expressed interest in creating a crossover episode with Spider-Man. Bixby was a fan of the Spider-Man character and believed that a crossover could be a unique and exciting opportunity to bring both two beloved Marvel superheroes together on screen. However, despite his interest, a crossover episode between The Incredible Hulk and the live action Spider-Man series at the time never came to be. The two shows were produced by different studios and aired on different networks, which likely presented a difficult challenge. And making the crossover happen. As a result, the idea remained unrealized during Bixby's time on the show. During the production of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, there was an interesting change to Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. Originally, the plan was for him to use mechanical web shooters instead of organic ones. In 2001, an early teaser trailer for Spider-Man was showcased at E3, and it revealed a scene with Tobey Maguire wearing mechanical web shooters. This confirmed that Peter Parker in the Raimi movies will rely on technology rather than have natural web abilities. However, at some point during production, the decision was made to alter this aspect. The exact timing when the change occurred is unclear, but according 
According to screenwriter David Cope, the concept of organic webs was inspired by James Cameron's Spider-Man script. It's possible during filming, Raymond and Cope decided to incorporate elements for Cameron's vision of Spider-Man as David Cope admired the unique perspective James Cameron had for Spider-Man. In The Amazing Spider-Man, there was a scene that didn't make it into the final version of the film involving Dr. Kirk Connors' transformation into the villain known as the Lizard. This scene was commonly known as the bathroom scene. In the deleted scene, the Lizard finds his way into Midtown Science High School by using the school toilet as an unconventional mode of transportation. Inside the bathroom, there were two girls engaged in a casual conversation. Naturally, they became frightened when a giant monster suddenly burst through the toilet. The girls then retreat to the corner of the bathroom. The Lizard approaches them and then begins to take his tongue out and wiggles it around in a disturbing manner. This moment while adding to the tension and horror of the scene was likely removed in the final cut to ensure the film maintained a more family friendly tone. Venom Let There Be Carnage was originally intended to be R-rated. This film served as a sequel to the 2018 movie Venom featuring the popular Marvel anti-hero and introduces the character Carnage, another symbiote based villain. The creative team behind the film expressed that they wanted to make a more darker and more violent movie that would warrant an R rating. However, during the post-production phase, it was ultimately decided to aim for a more acceptable PG-13 rating in order to reach a broader audience. Aunt May, also known as May Parker, is a fictional character in the Marvel comic universe. She is best known as the aunt and the doctor mother figure of Peter Parker. Aunt May has been depicted in various comic book series, television shows, and movies. She is often portrayed as a kind and nurturing woman who provides emotional support and guidance to Peter, particularly after the death of his parents and the loss of his uncle, Dan Parker. Aunt May is an important figure in Peter Parker's life and plays a significant role in shaping his character and motivation as Spider-Man. In 2014, there was a rumor with Sony creating a Aunt May solo movie that would have been set in the past that starred a young May as a spy and would have been played by Sally Fields from the Amazing Spider-Man movies. The script for the film, Spider-Man 3, went through several changes during its development for various reasons. Like any movie, creative decisions played a significant role in shaping the script with the introduction of new characters such as Sandman, Venom, and the continuation of the Green Goblin storyline. Finding the right balance and in integrating their stories into a cohesive narrative required script adjustments to ensure a compelling story. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man drew inspiration primarily from classic comic books made by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko in the 1960s, as well as Stan Lee and John Romita's work in the 1970s. The creative vision of Sam Raimi clashed with the expectations and input from the Sony executives who wanted to add the Venom storyline into the movie, which led to a missed outcome on the final product and is basically the reason why we got this scene. Avengers Infinity War is a superhero film that belongs to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The movie brings together various characters and storylines from previous MCU films. The movie is focused on Thanos, a powerful alien who seeks to gather all six Infinity Stones. These stones grant immense power over reality, time, space, mind, soul, and power. Thanos aims to use them to balance the universe by erasing half of all life. To stop Thanos, the Avengers join forces with other allies from the MCU. They unite together in a great battle against him. In a new clip from the original Marvel Studio Infinity Saga box set, a clip shows Doctor Strange advising Peter Parker to protect the Guardians. Spider-Man The New Animated Series was a computer animated show that was aimed to bring a more modern and edgier take on the Spider-Man character. The series follows the adventures of Peter Parker as he juggles his life as a college student and his secret superhero identity as Spider-Man. The show incorporates elements from the Spider-Man comics but also introduces new storylines and characters. The series features a mix of familiar villains like Kingpin and the Lizard. The show has a more mature tone compared to the previous animated adaptions. It explores darker themes and often deals with more mature topics. The animation style was unique and differed from the traditional hand-drawn animation we usually see in the Spider-Man animated series. Although the series only aired for one season, consisting of 13 episodes, it garnered a lot of attention. Unfortunately, due to the change in MTV's program direction, the show was canceled. Spider-Man vs. Craven the Hunter is a 1974 fan film produced by students at New York University. The fan film was directed by Bruce Cardozo and was adapted from the comic book storyline of the same name. 
from Amazing Spider-Man number 15 by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. The film was not officially licensed by Marvel Production, but it did receive an unofficial blessing of Stan Lee before starting production, as well as his approval to finish the product. The film reportedly sticks very close to the basic story, but apparently removes Chameleon and adds Peter Parker's girlfriend, Gwen Stacy, who has since became a popular supporting character in the comments. After plans for distribution fell through, Cardozo lost interest in the project and all known prints were lost. Looks like you made it to the end of the video. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button. Or if you thought this video was shit, make sure you hit the dislike button. I'm Tsunami, thanks for watching. Sugar! You can't escape me! I'll chase you to the ends of the earth!